Hi everybody, we're finally diving into EIGIP, my favorite routing protocol. Why my favorite? Well, you will find out the exact reasons why EIGIP is my first and the best choice. And actually, I bet it will definitely be your favorite routing protocol after watching this episode as well. In this session, I'm going to provide you with comprehensive information about EIGRP. Additionally, I will explain why you should use EIGRP, offering you logical reasons without any bias. And above all, I will tell you under what conditions you cannot implement EIGRP, which is extremely important, guys. Now I have some special question. What make EIGRP different? Algorithm. Algorithm is a significant part that makes EIGRP an efficient and flexible protocol. EIGRP is an enhanced distance vector, a combination of distance vector and link state. Here's an overview of EIGRP features. Number one is dual algorithm ensures consistent and loop-free routing decisions. Dual allows EIGRP to quickly adapt to changes in the network topology by immediately recalculating routes when necessary. Because of this feature, EIGRP has a very fast convergence. So let me make it clear, EIGRP is crazy fast. Number two is metric calculation. EIGRP uses composite metric mostly based on minimum bandwidth and total delay, which you can calculate metric with these two components. You can calculate metric with this formula, 256 times 10 to the power of 7 divided by minimum bandwidth plus total delay divided by 10 and also interface components including load, the pressure on interface, which the best condition is 1 slash 255. Another component is reliability, which has three conditions to calculate such as noisy data, interface, problem, and OK. In the first two conditions, data will be dropped, but if data is OK and all is OK, the number would be 255 OK from 255 total. And the last component is MTU or the size of the packet which is 1500 byte by default. So because of this algorithm, EIGRP is the only IGP that you can implement on equal load balance. If you wonder what is unequal load balance, imagine multiple paths that do not have the same cost. Unequal load balancing allows a router to send traffic over multiple paths with different costs. Okay, I'm EIGRP. I want to use both of these lads. <laughs> I mean both of these links. Okay, I, I give order. A thousand packets go through gig interface, this link. And a hundred packets go through fast ethernet, this interface. This is unequal load balance. Okay, all I said was goody goody about EIGRP. Now I want to explain you should not use EIGRP under these circumstances. I warn you, implementing EIGRP in a wrong situation causes waste of time, energy, and resources. There are certain scenarios where its use might be limited or not recommended. Number one, in non-Cisco environments. EIGRP is a Cisco proprietary protocol. Networks with the mix of different vendors' equipment may not support EIGRP. Number two, small networks. For small networks with simple topologies, EIGRP might be more complex than necessary. Protocols like RIP could be more appropriate due to their simplicity. Number three, 
limited scalability. While EIGIP is quite scalable, it may not be the best choice for extremely large networks or the networks that require specific scalability features not supported by EIGIP. Number 4. Interoperability If you need to ensure interoperability with networks running non-EIGIP protocols, you might encounter challenges. While EIGIP can redistribute routes from other protocols, the process can be complex and may require additional configuration. Number 5. Internet routing EIGRP is typically not used for internet routing. As BGP, the standard protocol used for this purpose, due to its extensive scalability and ability to handle the complex routing policies of the internet. So let me make it clear, use EIGRP if the first condition, if your network is big enough, it's not a fixed number, I don't know, because the maximum cop count for RIP is 15. So let's say when your routers become 12, you got it? And the second condition, when your network infrastructure consists entirely of Cisco devices, and also when you don't need to redistribute the route in other routing protocols. If you have these conditions, go for it. It is strongly recommended to use EIGRP. How EIGRP works? EIGRP uses three tables for its operation. Neighbor table stores information about directly connected routers. Topology table contains routes to all destinations shared by neighbors. Routing table holds the best routes to all destinations. EIGRP has five different types of packets for communication, such as hello, update, query, reply, and acknowledge. The mechanism at the beginning when we connect the routers to each other and configure IP on interfaces and set in EIGRP. Routers start to send hello packets by multicast IP 224.0.0.10 for adjacency discovery to establish neighborship and after neighborship is established the routers start to send update packets by unicast to a specific destination which consists of routing information to share the info with other routers when topology is changed the router sends query packet to its neighbors for requesting information about the affected routes and then reply packet comes up to respond the query packet reply is included of routing information and acknowledge packet for reliable connection after sending the packets including update query and reply this is exactly what is going on in the topology with EIGRP and the last thing you should know about EIGRP is neighborship conditions to build a neighborship in EIGRP, we have to consider five conditions. Number one is the same co-value for metric. You can see the co-value through this command, show IP protocol. Number two is you need to set the same subnet mask for each interface between two connected routers. Number three is setting the same AS number if you want to configure EIGRP through classic mode. Number four is authentication parameters that you need to consider it if you have already encrypted EIGRP connection. Well, I'm gonna make a comprehensive video with real-life scenario for EIGRP encryption in the upcoming videos. By the way guys, try to watch this video for several times and take notes 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.